I heard you in the other room asking your mother, Mama, am I a Palestinian? When she answered, Yes, a heavy silence fell on the whole house. It was as if something hanging over our heads had fallen, its noise exploding, and then silence. Afterwards, I heard you crying. I could not move. There was something bigger than my awareness being born in the other room through your bewildered sobbing. It was as if a blessed scalpel was cutting up your chest and putting there the heart that belongs to you. I was unable to move to see what was happening in the other room. I knew, however, that a distant homeland was being born again. Hills, plains, olive groves, dead people, torn banners and folded ones, all cutting their way into a future of flesh and blood and being born in the heart of another child. Do not believe that man grows. No. He is born suddenly. A word in a moment penetrates his heart to a new throb. One scene can hurl him down from the ceiling of childhood onto the ruggedness of the road. You have something in this world, so stand for it. Everything in this world can be robbed and stolen, except one thing. This one thing is the love that emanates from a human being towards a solid commitment to a conviction or cause. Imperialism has laid its body over the world. The head in Eastern Asia, the heart in the Middle East, its arteries reaching Africa and Latin America. Wherever you strike it, you damage it, and you serve the world revolution. The Palestinian cause is not a cause for Palestinians only, but a cause for every revolutionary, wherever he is, as a cause of the exploited and oppressed masses in our era. If the prisoner is beaten, it is an arrogant expression of fear. A person is courageous so long as he has no need for courage. But he collapses when the issue becomes real, and he is forced to understand courage as an act of surrender. A detachment from human involvement, and is content himself with being a spectator rather than a participant in life. Why didn't you bang on the sides of the tank? Why didn't you say anything? After all, 
in the final analysis. Man is a cause. I have an ability that I haven't seen in my life to imagine and see you. And when I see something or hear a word and comment on it in my mind, I hear you answer in my ear as if you are standing next to me with your hand in mine. Sometimes I hear you laughing, and sometimes I hear you refusing my opinion, and other times you are the first to make a comment. And I stare at the eyes of those standing in front of me to see if they saw you with me. My political position springs from my being a novelist, in so far as I am concerned. Politics and the novel are an indivisible case, and I can categorically state that I became politically committed because I am a novelist, not the opposite. It was in another country that I earned my harsh subsistence, a place that had everything and nothing. That same country which gave you everything in order to deny you it. For a brief moment, the entire future was contained in my mind in the form of a lightning flash that illuminates the enormity of the unknown. You were huddled up there as far from your childhood as you were from the land of oranges. The oranges that, according to a peasant, who used to cultivate them until he left, would shrivel up if a change occurred. And they were watered by a strange hand. I wonder where the gazelle went. In the pale light of the match, I saw his face, as it had always been, thin, harsh, cold. His lips moved. It went to die among its people. Gazelles like to die among their people. Falcons don't care where they die. Her hands were folded in her lap and I could see the palms, dry as blocks of wood, cracked like an old tree trunk. Through the furrows that years of hard work had traced in them, I could see her sorry journey from the time when she was a child until she grew to maturity. Those firm hands had nourished children as the earth nourishes the stem of a tender plant. And now they had opened suddenly, and the bird that had nestled there for twenty years had flown away. He knew his father through and through, and he knew that the past was, for him, a solid wooden box, locked with a thousand keys that had been cast into the depths of the ocean. On the other side of this wall, 
just the other side were all the things he had been deprived of. Over there was Kuwait, what only lived in his mind as a dream and a fantasy existed there. It was certainly something real of stones, earth, water, and sky, not as it slumbered in his troubled mind. There must be lanes and streets, men and women and children running about between the trees. None of them wanted to talk anymore. Not only because they were exhausted by their efforts, but because each one was swallowed up in his own thoughts. They were being carried along the road, together with their dreams, their fantasies, their hopes and ambitions, their misery and despair, their strength and weakness, their past and future, as if it were pushing against the immense door to a new, unknown destiny. And all eyes were fixed on the door's surface, as though bound to it by invisible threads. My own self had suffered so long. I hated Gaza and its inhabitants. Everything in the amputated town reminded me of my failed pictures, painted in gray by a sick man. And yet, what is this ill-defined tie we had with Gaza that blunted our enthusiasm for flight? Why didn't we analyze the matter in such a way as to give it a clear meaning? Why didn't we leave this defeat with its wounds behind us and move on to a brighter future that would give us deeper consolation? Why? We didn't exactly know. Despite the fact that Gaza is closed like the introverted lining of a rusted snail shell thrown up by the waves on the sticky, sandy shore by the slaughterhouse. Despite the fact that this Gaza was more cramped than the mind of a sleeper in the throes of a fearful nightmare with its narrow streets that had their peculiar smell the smell of defeat and poverty, its houses with their bulging balconies. Despite all this, what are the obscure causes that draw a man to his family, his house, his memories? As a spring draws a small flock of mountain goats, I don't know. I shall never forget Nadia's leg amputated from the top of the thigh. Nor shall I forget the grief which had molded her face and merged into its traits forever. I went out of the hospital in Gaza that day, my hand clutched in silent derision. The blazing sun filled the streets with the color of blood, and Gaza was brand new. You and I never saw it like this. The stones piled up where we lived had a meaning, and they seemed to have been put there for no other reason but to explain it. This Gaza in which we had lived and with whose good people we had spent seven years of defeat was something new. It seemed to me just a beginning. 
I imagined that in the main street that I walked along on the way back home was only the beginning of a long, long road. Everything in this Gaza throbbed with a sadness which was not confined to weeping. It was a challenge. More than that, it was something like reclamation of the amputated leg. I went out into the streets of Gaza, streets filled with blinding sunlight. They told me that Nadia had lost her leg when she threw herself on top of her little brothers and sisters to protect them from the bombs and flames that had fastened their claws into the house. Nadia could have saved herself. She could have run away, rescued her leg, but she didn't. Why? I have no regrets. No, nor will I finish what we began together in childhood. This obscure feeling that you had as you left Gaza. This small feeling must grow into a giant deep within you. It must expand. You must seek it in order to find yourself here among the ugly debris of defeat. Come back, my friend. We are all waiting for you. Return to us. Come back to learn from Nadia's leg, amputated from the top of the thigh, what life and what existence is worth. <laughs>